Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Crit. Recently, some YouTubers like Roger's Base and Player Essence were invited to try out the demo of Fire Emblem Three Houses, and the footage that we'll be talking about today is thanks to Roger's Base. Roger's Base got to talk to Chico from Nintendo Treehouse quite a bit, and she confirmed some really cool things, and also some stuff that we've been wondering about all along. Now, I'm not going to go through every single little thing from Roger's Base's video, as I don't want to devalue his content. This is all his footage, by the way, so please, please, please go check out his video after watching through this one if you want to see the full live gameplay and his honestly really great excitement and reaction to experiencing the game for the first time. There will be a link in the video description down below, or you can click up here. Just look at how excited he is here. Right off the bat here we get a look at the title screen, so it's now confirmed that Sothis will in fact appear on her little stone throne at some point in the game, considering we've also seen this screen without her. It might also just be random, as we do get to see later on in the session when they return to the title screen that she is in fact gone. We've got options for continue, new game, extras, copy, and delete. This screen here we've seen a bunch, but I suppose we could consider this like the game's or the monastery's landing screen. You can choose to explore, see what other players have done percentage-wise with the global activity boxes that we talked about a few episodes ago, and make other important choices like seminar to teach students, battle to move on to the next battle or paralogue, rest to recharge byleth and pass time, marketplace to visit the marketplace to buy items and equipment, certifications to upgrade characters, and skip to skip days and speed things along. We also of course get the nice calendar view to see what events are currently happening around the monastery. Chico from Nintendo Treehouse confirms the game will be fully voiced, even small talk around the monastery, and also once again confirms dual audio. Dual audio means that the game will also include all of the Japanese original audio, so for those of you that prefer to hear the original Japanese voice actor's audio for the game, instead of the dub basically, you'll be able to. This is something that fans always want, but we don't always necessarily get, so I'm glad to see it return. You can either walk around the monastery yourself, or once you've been to a particular area, you can choose to fast travel using the map. While Chico is looking around at the different areas of the monastery, we can see two new characters, one of which I've mentioned before but we haven't really talked about yet, and thankfully we've just now gotten her profile within the past few days. This is Flane. Thanks once again to Satsuma FS for the translation. Flane is the younger sister of Sateth, aide to the Archbishop. Though she lives at the monastery, she's not a student. She's a gentle girl who interacts with others openly, but since her curiosity can make her act rashly, she makes her brother Sateth worry a lot. How do you do, teacher? Though I'm not a student. The choices here are that's a shame and then where can I meet you? Come on, Violet. She's, she's kind of young. A little young for you, isn't she? If the chance arises, I'd like to become a student and study too. But since I don't have family besides my brother, I've been allowed to stay at the monastery. The other character is Cyril, or Cyril. Considering Flane is not a student and instead is a younger sibling, and Cyril looks to be rather young himself, he's probably someone else's sibling too. He kind of looks like Claude, and it could just be a coincidence, but in this video he does happen to be in the dormitory along with Claude, so I wonder if it's possible that this is a younger brother of Claude's. Maybe, maybe not. We'll probably end up getting his profile one of these days. Knowing how things always seem to go, it'll probably come out the day after I release this video. We also do know from this really rough screenshot that these two will be recruitable characters, as we can see Cyril here as a commoner and Flane as a priest, so I wonder how that's gonna go. Yes, I do want to talk to Mercedes. <laughs> what can I say? Roger's base is clearly a man of culture. They also confirm that Mercedes can be scouted and recruited into the Black Eagles or Golden Deer if you didn't choose the Blue Lions, so if you do like her like we do, you can certainly get her. It's extremely brief, but when Byleth talks to Mercedes, she mentions that St. Cyrus's body is missing from its coffin, but they found a sword in its place. Is this Raite, or Lightning, the sword that Edelgard ends up wielding later? I'm thinking that it's pretty likely. It appears in the Saros mural, and the Divine Saros was seen using it in battle in the cutscenes against Nemesis, so the Sarosian religion is clearly linked to this particular sword because of that. Mercedes then jokingly says, Do you think she moved from her coffin and left the sword behind? There's clearly some shenanigans happening here with corpses coming back to life, I suppose reminiscent of the terrors in Fire Emblem Echoes, because we also get to see what is likely Nemesis busting out of his coffin. So maybe the goal of those who slither in the dark is to revive corpses of legendary figures somehow. Then we can see that Mercedes values magic and bow stats, and won't be able to join you unless you've got the proper amount of experience in those realms. So fire up your archers, boyos, if you want this waifu. Five, five. One thing I wanted to mention is that, the, you know, every decision matters in this game, right? Uh, some of the students in a different house might be 
becoming as an enemy and then show up in a battlefield against got you. Got it, got it. And well, that's going to be rough. But if that happens, you might have to kill her. Or oh, him, man. Right? Oh, right? Oh, right? It's possible, I guess. right? All right. But if you recruited her during the school phase, yeah. and if she stuck with your house, yeah. then you are actually saving and changing her fate. Chico then prepares Roger's base and us for the extremely likely possibility that we will in fact be ending up fighting and killing students from other armies later. So you will fight students from the other houses, meaning that whoever you recruit from the other houses, you are changing their fate. Otherwise, you're likely going to end up killing them on the battlefield in the bitter war following the time skip. Who lives and who dies? This is more than just about waifus now. Well... I guess maybe it's not. Yeah, never mind. It's still it's still about the waifus. It's just that only waifu and husbando lives matter, I guess. We then see a conversation with Sateth, who says Geralt is looking for Byleth. Well, it seems that Geralt makes it to the monastery alive, at least for a little while. I suppose he could always die or be corrupted a bit further in the game, like a certain father character in a previous Fire Emblem game, but let's not get into that. We also get to briefly see how quests work, and an example of some of the items that you can get from them. Looks like you can unlock battalions from quests, and you can certainly get items like training weights, dusker bear meat, and mint leaves alongside renown, and it looks like gold is called money this time around instead of just gold. Well, that's a new character next to Catherine, and it looks like his name is Rodrigue. Is he another teacher? A knight of Seros with Catherine, maybe? Interesting. Chico then mentions cooking, fishing, and farming. We've yet to see anything further with cooking, so it might just end up being selecting food options in the menu, but I definitely want to see how farming works because it sounds awesome. Here's an example of some of the meals that you can share with students, and the materials that will be required. You even get to see the specific characters who enjoy that certain meal, and they'll probably get even more of a motivation boost from consuming it. You can choose to share meals with others, and you can actually pick anyone in the monastery, even if they're not your students, but you'll obviously receive more of a benefit if you pick your own students, because they'll receive a significant increase to their motivation bars, allowing them to take on some more teaching and tutoring. And of course, you also get professor level EXP. They then specifically mention that in this game there are a lot of ways to build up character relationships, which makes sense from everything that we've seen so far. It sounds like based upon the Rogers base footage that there might be some special items for using Fire Emblem character amiibo with the amiibo gazebo, so maybe we can get some cool throwback weapons like falchions, the binding blade, and so on if we scan the corresponding amiibo. Or at least Chico says we'll find out. Or like if I tap a tiki you amiibo. Oh no, okay, <laughs> all right, I gotta do it, day one, I gotta do it then. So my friends, it's time to bust out and dust off your Fire Emblem amiibo. Chico points out here that if you're not into the whole teaching thing, you can just click auto instruct. So for anyone not interested in a lot of the new school coat of paint mechanics that this game will have, you can pretty much just skip past a good chunk of that and get back to doing what you like. I love that, and they were clearly thinking of ways to please a variety of different kinds of Fire Emblem fans with this. Take a look at Aelgard in some of these different classes. I like. She also points out that when you change classes, your character level will not return to level 1, so as you move about classes you will retain your current level. After unlocking classes with the certification exams, you can then switch to them whenever you like. You also don't have to instantly class change like with promotion items in previous games. She does however mention that intermediate seals will be limited like seals in previous games, so choose wisely. We then get to see the battle prep screen, which is looking super Milla's turn wheelie, in my opinion. And it shows that you can check out all the usual stuff, including support, and even marketplace, perhaps for some last minute weapon and item purchases. Very cool. This is the King of Beasts map, this battle in the outskirts, and it's the same battle that we've seen many different people playing at E3. I'll talk about this map more in depth in another video, but for now we can see that the King of Beasts is a separate third army on the battlefield, which makes sense because it's a monster and it's not aligned with the opposing enemy army. Annette also has Cutting Gale here, which is the first official localization for the spellbook previously known as Shaver in the new Mystery of the Emblem fan localization. So that's pretty cool. Chico says this third army, the King of Beasts, has the reward and is the goal of this map. It's also not a story chapter to avoid spoiling everyone, so it's more of a paralogue battle. And oh my god, finally, some confirmation that they did in fact change formations from what they were originally planning. And in the previous uh, year, like last year the E3, we mentioned about the uh, different formations available in the game. Uh, they changed the battle system a little bit, so there's no different formations. Uh, they all look in this triangle face okay. uh, shape, but the difference is that the different type of battalion, this unit, uh, available and then the, each of each one of these battalion uh, group have a different kind of ability you can utilize during the battle. Formations were changed into battalions confirmed. 
I wonder why. It seems that battalions will make use of many different soldier types, gambit attacks, and combat arts for variety instead of using different unit formations, like what was probably the original plan. Chico confirms that enemies will also fight the third army monsters and go for the loot like the player will. She also finally confirms that the red lines coming from the enemy units are toward the current character that they're most likely to attack, so we can finally visualize who might be in danger quite a bit easier. This is awesome. This is what we speculated at first, but we never had confirmation, and I'm super glad to see it come true. Archers can also shoot from multiple tiles away, not quite as ridiculously as in Echoes, or at least we don't know that yet for snipers or other upgraded classes, but also skills like Deadeye and Curve Shot will allow for even further range. He's also able to counter at one range too, so this is kind of like Echoes archers all over again. And personally, I'm super stoked about it. Nice. And it seems that even Chico knows that Sylvain is a womanizer. And do you want to hear some of the characters' English voices? Here they are thanks to Player Essence. You will most certainly fulfill the grand destiny that the goddess has seen fit to grant you. Aristocrats are fools, allowing their lives to be dictated by their crests. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. You can check out his video up here. I really can't wait for Fire Emblem Three Houses. This is going to be amazing. How about you guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, slash the thumbs up down below. Get subscribed for more Fire Emblem Three Houses coverage up to the launch of the game, and hopefully some helpful guides to come after it's out. Follow us on Twitter if you want to get the latest Three Houses news and updates as they come out. And you can also chat with us on our Discord server if you want to talk Fire Emblem Three Houses and other games with our community there. And a huge thank you to all of my amazing patrons that help to make content like this possible. You guys are the real MVPs. Once again, shout out to Roger's Base for the footage of this episode. Please check that out. And I'll see you all next time.